Welcome to Lower Ghost Goths and Ghouls, an audio tour. Edgar Allan Poe came to Lowell in July 1848. His beloved wife Virginia had died of tuberculosis the year before, and in his grief he began to drink heavily and fell on hard times. To earn some money, he decided to go on tour and lecture about poetry. His presentation in the Wentworth Building, in a public meeting hall that once existed on an upper floor, was considered a great success. One audience member, named Bardwell Haywood, wrote to a friend, "'It was a brilliant affair in the course of which Poe recited specimens of the best poetry America ever produced.'" Bardwell's sister, Nancy Richmond, was also at the lecture with her husband Charles, a wealthy Lowell businessman. After it was over, the Richmonds offered to house Poe for the night to save him from having to take a late train. During the night, Nancy stayed up talking to Poe, listening as he mourned the death of his wife. By the end of the night, they'd struck up a bond. Nancy, described in contemporary accounts as bored with her life and her marriage, and given to new fads, seemed delighted to strike up an acquaintance with a fascinating literary celebrity. Poe seemed entranced by her and grateful for her willing ear. They started a correspondence, and Nancy later traveled by herself to New York City to visit the mother of Poe's deceased wife, and some say to see Poe again, but we don't know if he was present during this meeting. Poe returned to Lowell in October that year, and he spent three days with the Richmonds, and again at the end of May 1849, when he spent a week. During these visits, Poe and Nancy were inseparable. We have no evidence of Charles Richmond's reaction to Poe's visits to his home and correspondence with his wife. Surviving letters from Nancy's brother make clear that during all three Poe visits, the entire extended Richmond family was also present, mesmerized by the famous poet's pronouncements on the state of American poetry and literature. Commentators are divided in their assessment of the Nancy-Edgar relationship. Some mention Nancy only as an acquaintance in Lowell with whom Poe corresponded. Others see it as a passionate, though platonic, relationship. After all, he did write a love poem for her called For Annie, which he called much the best I have ever written. Before you draw your own conclusions, it's important to note that while Poe was visiting and corresponding with Nancy Richmond, he was involved with two other women. One was Sarah Whitman of Providence, a wealthy widow, who was also a well-known poet. In 1848, Poe proposed to Whitman. She accepted at first, but eventually changed her mind at the urging of her mother and because of her own doubts about Poe's commitment to her and to sobriety. The next summer, Poe proposed to Sarah Elmira Shelton, another wealthy widow who accepted and started making wedding preparations. Nancy and Poe's relationship, whatever it was, came to an end in October 1849. Poe had traveled to Baltimore on business and was found staggering incoherently through the streets. He was hospitalized, and after spending several days unconscious, he died on October 7, 1849. After Charles Richmond died in 1873, Nancy legally changed her name to Annie. She used it for the rest of her life. She lived until 1898 and requested that the name be carved on her headstone, which you can see in Lowell Cemetery. The building known now as the Worthen House Cafe has been a staple of downtown since its construction in 1834. Jack Kerouac and Ed McMahon drank at the same bar that stands today, and it houses the only pulley-driven fan system in its original location in the United States. When first constructed, the building at first contained a dry goods store on the first floor and a rooming house on the top two floors. The building was converted to a bar in 1898, at which time the tin ceiling was added and opened as the Worthen House. It was used as a tavern and hotel until Prohibition. It had a number of occupants during that era, including a restaurant, a soft drink vendor, and a real estate agency. And some, it seems, kept the old tradition alive. A false wall panel, located behind the bar on the right side, just above an old built-in icebox, can be removed to reveal a secret hiding spot for liquor bottles. It opened as a new restaurant after Prohibition, and the owners changed the name to the Old Worthen in 1942. Those are the facts we know about the Worthen. Here are the legends. People say that this was a favorite bar of Edgar Allan Poe's, and that he wrote part of The Raven here. Problem is, he had been dead for 50 years when it opened as a bar. He could have stayed here when it was a rooming house, but he first performed in Lowell three years after The Raven was published, so that seems unlikely. Turns out a number of places lay claim to be the spot where Poe first wrote his masterpiece. But literary sleuths believe the most likely spot to be a farmhouse in Virginia where he was living with his wife 
in the months before The Raven was actually published. The story may have emerged from another tall tale of Poe and Lowell. He is rumored to have written the short poem Lines on Ale to pay his bar tab at the Washington Tavern, once located in the spot now occupied by the Dunkin' Donuts on Merrimack Street. A copy of this poem hung on the tavern's wall until about 1920. Filled with mingled cream and amber, I will drain that glass again. Such hilarious visions clamber through the chamber of my brain. Quaintest thoughts, queerest fancies, come to life and fade away. What care I how time advances? I am drinking ale today. Post scholars dispute that this is actually his work. Another story revolves around a spirit dubbed Matthew who haunts the third floor. Is he a rooming house guest who never left? Or a former occupant of the hiding space that some speculate could have hidden runaway slaves? Who knows? But according to the owner, he can make some really strange noises at night. Kerouac may actually be the most compelling spirit haunting the Worthen, although perhaps in a more metaphorical sense. The beat writer who wrote multiple novels about his early life in Lowell was a frequent patron at the Worthen and did a lot of his creative thinking here. A former owner once said, I believe the soul of Kerouac still exists. <laughs>